Hi all, welcome to Smart Catalyst. Today we are going to see the news analysis dated 24th November 2018. Now we are going to see the following 7 prelims topics. First one is re related with Andhra policy that is skill development policy. Second one is that oil dips 6% despite OPEC cut. Third one is that finance ministry have uh, again stick to the capital infusion plan for the PSU banks. Fourth one is the redefinition was worth the weight that is the kilogram. Fifth one is that Bitcoin bubble burst. Sixth one is that the India to study the marijuana derived drugs. Seventh one is the Chandrayaan 2 lunar lander faces the crucial test. The first article is that the Andhra policy well crafted but there are some limitations which we are going to see and uh, in the India skills report 2019 which was prepared by AICTE, UNDP, and Confederation of Industries and Association of Indian Universities. So all these organizations and agencies are preparing this India Skills Report. In this India Skills Report, Andhra Pradesh has been ranked number one and which has been improved from the last year. Uh, that is the seventh rank two. It has topped the list now. In this index, the agencies have told that the employability of the engineering graduates stands at 63.1 percentage, which is almost 20 percentage leap. So this is a result of a well-crafted government policy to impart the job skills. In this infographics, you can see that the current status of the graduates of the Andhra Pradesh among 2.4 percentage demand only 0.1 percentage is the supply which is the skilled supply and remaining 2.3 percentage is the deficit which is the unskilled. So to address this the Andhra Pradesh government has crafted this government policy regarding the skill development. They have constituted an autonomous organization for skill development of these unskilled young graduates. This skill development authority is needed because of the poor standard of education in the first place. In the first place in the sense the private colleges. There are about 200 plus private colleges in Andhra Pradesh wherein the quality of education is not up to the global standards. To make up for this the government is investing again in imparting the required standard skills. The Skill Development Corporation of Andhra Pradesh have also uh, initiated courses for PG, engineering graduates, degree students and unemployed. By this skill development program, they have enrolled about 6.14 lakh of the unskilled graduates and thereby transferring them into useful labor force which is to meet the 2.4 percentage of the demand. But the present approach can only be successful in the short term for which we have to have a comprehensive reform in the education sector and this is not only uh, necessary for AP but it, it should be also uh, conferred on other states also mainly on the least developing states of Bimaru. Only then we can harness the potential of the uh, demographic dividends. Now we are going to see the second article that is oil dips 6 percentage uh, despite potential OPEC cut. This article has been taken from the Hindu and in this article the Brent crude oil price has fallen by 3 dollars per barrel and thereby amounting to 58.79 dollars per barrel and this is the lowest in the past 7 weeks. So this is the biggest one month decline as we all know that the energy needs of the developing countries are increasing rapidly year by year we have to have a concern about the oil prices india exports in oil prices 
especially india imports 80 percentage of its oil needs from other countries so india needs to track the oil prices globally to meet its energy security so now we are going to see why the crude oil prices have fallen by three dollars per barrel first one is the rising global surplus the surplus also means that there is increasing oil production per year mainly this 2018-19 also, even producers considered cutting the output to curb the supply and thereby creating an artificial demand. The oil prices have still fallen to $3 per barrel. IEA, that is the International Energy Agency, have expected that the non-OPEC output alone rise by 2.3 million barrel per day of the production. Here we have to know what is OPEC. That is, OPEC is the International Oil and Petroleum Exporting Countries, which comprises, which has been established in 1960, mainly by 15 nations comprising of African countries, Asian, mainly that is the West Asian Gulf countries and uh, South America. The main concern is build up of the unused fuel as it uh, happened in 2015. So here in this condition, uh, India can take into account of filling up of the filling up of its strategic oil reserves which have been starting its phase 2 in Padur, Mangalore and Vizag. So in order to curb this condition of uh, creating more unused fuel, the top crude exporter Saudi Arabia to reduce the supply and it pushes the OPEC nations to agree to a joint output cut of 1.4 million barrel per day. Thereby the Brent prices likely to recover back into the $70 per barrel. Now we are going to see the third article which is the finance ministry may stick to the capital infusion plan for the PSU banks and this article has been taken from Hindu and in this article as we all know that the Indian banks especially the public sector banks are suffering from non-performing assets and that resulting into twin balance sheet problem. So in order to take an prompt, uh, promptive action the government that is the finance ministry has finalized to infuse capital of about 54,000 crore by this month end. So, uh, the why is it so important to have uh, this capital infusion at this point of time? Because RBI have already deferred the deadline of the Basel 3 norms of having the capital conversion of having the capital conversion buffer of 2.5 percentage by a year. So, this will ease the burden of PSBs by 35,000 crore. At this point of time, uh, the, the PSBs only require about 15,000 to 20,000 crore of infusion amount. The government has finalized to infuse about 54,000 crores into these PSBs. This may lead to the fiscal deficit of the central government and so the state-owned banks would be needing only lesser funds. So this is a, a concern. So what is as claimed by the state, central government, the purpose of this capital infusion is to help and improve the bank's financial health and there, moreover the some banks would get necessary regulatory capital that means those banks which are poorly performing would be benefited from this capital infusion of the finance ministry. Some banks would get it for the fueling growth. Also the lending capacity would increase by 3.5 lakh crore among the PSBs. Now the next article we are going to see is the Bitcoin bubble burst and this article has been taken from the Indian Express. So what's in news? The Bitcoin has slipped to $4,000 also its peers like other types of cryptocurrencies have also tumbled down in the market. 
This is the worst weekly slump ever after the crypto mania which peaked in the early January. So here we have to note what is this cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency is nothing but a digital or virtual currency which uses the cryptography for security. And the, it is a decentralized system based on the blockchain technology. The first blockchain based cryptocurrency is the Bitcoin. The, uh, similarly, many types of cryptocurrencies have emerge like ethereum like coin feather coin etc so now we shall see how it works we have to know that the cryptocurrencies can also be mined by solving complex puzzles Also, if there is any transaction between a consumer and supplier using this cryptocurrencies, the transaction will be notified to all its users. Once uh, it has been notified, that then it will enter into the validation process which will be used by the encryption techniques. And this will be verified and this verified transaction will be added to the blockchain technology which is a public ledger. So which means anyone can view this transaction and with this the transaction gets completed. So this is a simple step of following uh, the cryptocurrency transaction using the blockchain technology. Here we can see some of the features of the cryptocurrency. The first one is the it has no intrinsic value which means it cannot be exchanged with any other commodity like cash or gold and the second one is that it has no physical form and exists only in the network which means the it is an virtual currency and third one is that its supply is not determined by a central bank which means it doesn't it is not regulated or coordinated by any central banks Besides this, some countries like Venezuela have legalized this cryptocurrency to exchange with the physical commodities. Now we shall see the position of cryptocurrency in India. Both Finance Ministry and Reserve Bank of India have shown its area of concern on regulating this cryptocurrency by banning it. On one hand, the Reserve Bank of India has imposed a virtual ban on using this cryptocurrencies. On the other hand, Finance Ministry has set up a committee to regulate and to oversee the usage of this unregulated cryptocurrency transactions. And this committee is the Dinesh Sharma committee. So for prelims per this should be noted as which committee is has been regulated for the cryptocurrencies now we are going to see the next article redefinition that was worth the wait this article has been taken from the paper mint and it is nothing but the the definition for kilogram has been changed because of some reasons we shall see one by one in the following slide one must note that this the usage of the kilogram has started since 1889. The definition of kilogram as of now is having a shiny lump of 90% of platinum and 10% of iridium kept in a special glass case known as the international prototype of the kilogram. This international prototype is housed at the headquarters of International Bureau of Weights and Measures. This International Bureau of Weights and Measures has been established in 1875 with 60 member nations by a convention called Meter Convention. So this should be noted for the prelims perspective and we shall see why the definition of kilogram has been changed now because the problem is that the prototype doesn't always weigh the same because of the factors like it may pick up the micro particles of dirt and even during the process of cleaning. So now we shall see how it has been defined. The, in this, uh, in the new definition of kilogram, the authors, the scientists have used the Planck's constant which forms the basic fundamental of quantum physics. In this Planck constant, it uses 
photons to measure the frequency. So therefore, one photon's energy, so this Planck's constant can be used along with the Kibble balance to have an accurate weighing machine of uh, using of kilogram. So this new definition of BIPM will come into force on 20th May of 2019. The next article we are going to see that India to study marijuana derived drugs. This article has been taken from the paper Hindu and as we all know there is a debate going on whether to legalize this marijuana so that uh, one group says it can be uh, used for many medical purposes and medical researchers as it is having numerous medicinal properties to cure some of the following diseases as qualified by the medical team. But the other group says that it is an addictive drug which can be used for smoking, vaporization, within food or as an extract and that which can lead to the major psychoactive uh, disorders for especially among the youth population. So this marijuana is nothing but a psychoactive drug taken from the cannabis plant that can be used for varied purposes as I have said already. In this context, Indian government have banned the use of this cannabis by passing a Narcotic Drugs and Psychotropic Substances Act of 1985. But now the news is the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research the ICMR and the Department of Di Biotechnology are getting together to promote the research in herbal drugs using this marijuana. Also the researchers will test whether the strains of the marijuana could be effective in the treatment of breast cancer, sickle cell anemia and other disorders. Now we are going to see the next article, Lunar Lander faces a crucial test. This article has been taken from the Hindu. Following the successful Chandrayaan-1 mission, ISRO have planned to send the Chandrayaan-2 which is an advanced manned mission to the moon. And this is ISRO's first interplanetary mission to land rover on any celestial body. The main difference between Chandrayaan-1 and Chandrayaan-2 is that it has an orbiter, lander and a rover configuration with which we can have a soft landing on moon and moving a rover on its surface. So, in order to make this Chandrayaan 2 mission successful, ISRO has started readying a part of the Chalakir site which is in Karnataka that resembles lunar craters uh, where it will be conducting some of the preliminary sensor tests. The ISRO has also planned to fly the sensors on an aircraft over its artificial lunar site at Chalakir. In this Chalakir site of Karnataka, it will assess the height from the landing spot and decide the speed of the lander, also helps the lander to navigate the boulders or uneven surfaces on moon. And the test on ground can be called as the lander sensor performance test. So you have to note that the UPSC may ask that this lander sensor performance test may be related to which mission which is the Chandrayaan 2. So now we have completed the prelims articles, now we shall see the mains articles. The first article being the corridor of hope which is the newly proposed Kartarpur corridor by India and Pakistan. And the second one is the looking beyond the optics of the look east policy. The first article is that the corridor of hope which has been taken from the newspaper Hindu and it can be potentially asked in IR paper 2. On the 550th birth anniversary of Guru Nanak, who is the founder of the religion Sikhism, the Indian as well as the Pakistan government has proposed this Kartarpur corridor project. 
So what is this purpose of this Kartarpur corridor project is to enable a visa free access from India as well as from Pakistan for the Sikh pilgrims to visit the religious centers located on both sides of the country. And one more thing that it is believed that Guru Nanak has spent his last 18 years of his life in this Kartarpur Sahib. Now we shall see that where this Kartarpur is located. So in this infographics, this is Pakistan and this is India. And in the Pakistan's Punjab province, this Kartarpur is located 120 kilometers from Lahore. And this is the Dera Baba Nanak, which is located in the Indian soil. And this Kartarpur Sahib is located on the banks of River Ravi. So, the corridor will be connecting these two places. So, we have to note that this Kartarpur project is not through any agreement between India and Pakistan, whereas it is just a mutual consensus among these two governments. Also, this project would be a big leap forward for people-to-people -people relations. And not only that, it can also heal the historic animosity present between the two countries for many years past. And this 4 km long corridor of having easy logistics can enrich the confidence building measures between the two governments. Here we have to note one point for prelims is that the pilgrimages between India and Pakistan have are governed by the 1974 protocol on visits to the religious shrines. Moreover, this initiative will also serve as a template for cross-border exchange of people based on faith. Also, they, we may hope that this project may solve the contentious issue present between India and Pakistan on the lands of Jammu and Kashmir. Now, we shall see the second article for mains which is related to the Lukist policy and this article has been taken from Hindu and it is also pertained to IR that is paper 2. This article speaks about the Lukist policy with special emphasis on country Vietnam. As we all know that this Lukist policy have been launched by the Narasimha Rao government in 1991. Before 1991, India used to focus only on the western countries for its trade and related matters. But after launching this Lukist policy project in 1991, India shifted its views to focus on the eastern countries including the southeastern Asian countries. At this point, the President's choice of visit to Vietnam shows significance of the southeastern nations to the India's foreign relations. So now we shall see why Vietnam is critical for India's foreign policy. Vietnam is a rapidly growing regional economic giant showing both dynamism and pragmatism in its calculations. Also, Vietnam is performing well in trading of agricultural products. So, it becomes a major exporter of the agricultural products after its entry into the comprehensive and progressive agreement for the Trans-Pacific Partnership. So, this agreement is can be also referred as TPP-11 having the uh, TPP countries within its purview. So, this agreement has a potential to boost Vietnam's economic growth from 6.8 percentage to about 9 percentage having an increase of 1.1 to 3.5 percentage by the year 2030. Because of these reasons, India should enhance its relations with their Vietnam. One of the potential area is the healthcare. Both India as well as Vietnam has 80 to 90 percentage of its people to be covered under its health policy. And India's ambitious health policy, health program is that the Ayushman Bharat. So, this is the area wherein uh, India and Vietnam can establish a joint public-private partnership agreement. Internationally, Vietnam's foreign policy is characterized by multi-directionalism, which India is also pitching for. Besides this, there is a commonality in security. Both India and Vietnam are wanting for freedom of navigation,
in the Indo-Pacific region. where there is located the contentious South China Sea. So, both the countries adhere with the United Nations Convention on the Law of Sea which is UN clause relating to the freedom of navigation and it also ensures the maritime security among the Asian countries as well as India. Also, India's energy security is wanting for to establish a relation with the eastern countries establish the Vietnam where uh, recently ONGC have explored an oil well but it has been stopped by the actions of Chinese government. So what is the way forward is both India and Vietnam should focus on sub-regionalism in between the rise of Chinese aggression. For this, India and Vietnam uh, have signed a joint statement on March 2018 that focuses on this Mekong Ganga cooperation. This Mekong Ganga cooperation has six members and uh, which is five members of e Asian countries and one is India. We have to note that in this cooperation, China is not present. Also, the Cambodia, Laos, Vietnam, India growth triangle ensures the sub-regional cooperation among these countries. Thus, this cooperation model offers choices and opportunities for development of both the countries. Thank you.